Dom D'Amelio and the National Middle School Duels. Dom, what year are we in for the National Middle School Duels this year? Yeah, we were in year nine, so head into year nine this year. Almost um, a decade, better than Dom. Ever. Almost a decade, right? That's right. I love it. And then we've been, I've been working with you ever since the get-go of it, right? You have. Yep, yep. You're the catalyst behind this, so... Yep, you introduced us to Flow and got us going, and introduced us to um, the defense soap and uh, corner rugs, many corner rugs, and got us going. Got some sponsors, and now we've got you got some pretty good partners that you guys are working with in year nine here. Who are the other main partners that you guys work with at the National Middle School Duels? Yep, yep. So we've been with Rudis since day one. Um, Jesse Lang's been phenomenal uh, setting us up, and then. Um, defense soap. So guy Seiko, um, he's increased his sponsorship this year. Yeah. So he is going to have a, a table and, um, banners, um, and he'll have supplies for each table. So he's stepped it up. Every yeah, table, has these, right? That's right. Every table. I love it. Yeah. Some people do a complete bath with that stuff afterwards, but yes. And then Destination Toledo, they've been phenomenal. Um, and then OAC committee, the High Athletic Committee with Jared. Um, we rent our gear from them. And the UT Wrestling Club's been stepping up. So they've been growing as a club, and uh, they volunteer their time and been very helpful. So I've had you on Barbarian Hour before. I've had you on a couple other different ones. This is Go High Cash podcast, a new one, and I like being able to talk to you guys about different things when you we get you guys on this. But the biggest thing with you guys is when you started this, this is kind of a testament to you. Your son, um, Dylan D'Amelio, was, did not get to compete in the event, right? That's correct. Yep. He had just um, was done with middle school, so he never competed. But your other three sons, it's, it's Damien and what's the other? Th uh, Dylan and Devin. Devin, Dylan, Dylan, yes. Damien, right? Yes. Did any of the three boys, I know you got one that's older than um, Dylan, obviously. He didn't get to wrestle on it, but did your youngest son, is that Damien? Uh, Dylan. For, or I'm sorry, Devin. <laughs> Devin. <laughs> did Devin get to wrestle in the event? He did. He did. So he wrestled one year in it and uh, had a tough go. He got beat up pretty good. Um, but then he rolled into his middle season and was undefeated in one league, you know, so – yeah, it prepared him. It's crazy because you put the such a tough event like this at the front of your schedule. And I know what you guys do. You guys wrestle like a true junior high schedule. You didn't really do a club schedule for any of your boys, right? You just did regular junior high, Genoa junior high schedule, didn't you? Uh, for Dylan and, and uh, Damien, we did. So um, the middle school season's short. So as soon as the season's end, ended, we started traveling. Okay, but I'm saying like they didn't go to Tulsa instead. They we did the kickoff. We did the we did the kickoff. You did kickoff, okay, but you didn't do Tulsa Nationals. You did kickoff. Yes. So it's like crazy because you did you did the two the ten week season in season. Then you went out and you got the other competition, right? Right. A lot of and actually Dylan did both. So he did middle school practices with his uh, school, and then he also went out to Burnett's. So he would do. Two practices. I think it paid off. I think he climbed it climbed up on the uh, D one podium last year. I think it. I think it's paying off. And hey, how about he beat one of my other favorite college wrestlers, in Cole Matthews in the All American round. And a guy you know who started the season number one, and a guy who's coming back for another year. Did you know that? I did. It's kind of awesome. Like. There's two athletes I want to have on my pod. I don't normally, you know, do athletes on the podcast, have them on the podcast. I had, I had Dell in the summer and he did a great job and he's a great kid. And I've known him since he's a little guy, but Cole Matthews is another guy. I'm a big fan of now. Um, I told you, I'd ask you a couple of Ohio state questions. Does Dylan go up or does he stay down? He's going up 49. He's excited. Yep. He's been cutting a lot of weight and he's looking forward to moving up. That was the plan all summer. So nothing changes. Well, obviously, um, the Sammy Sasso, Sammy Sasso was robbed at gunpoint and suffered a gunshot wound. 
Um, were they going to, was he, the plan was they were going to move everybody up. Is that what they were going to do? Yeah. Yeah. The whole middle lineup was moving up. So that was set before the terrible accident. Yeah. Well, not really an accident, Dom, an act of, uh, robbery, I think we should call it. Right. Um, so he, now they, they, you know, Ohio state's in a very different situation, obviously not having Sammy and Sammy does technically, if he were able to recover and come back, he could have two more years, right? Uh, this was his final year. This was his um, COVID year. He was third on the U.S. national team, so I think he had an Olympic red shirt. He could have oh, won. yeah, right, right, if you choose so, to take so, that, right, so absolutely. But here, I'm a person that comes from the school of thought. I want Sammy Sasso to walk. I want Sammy Sasso to be able to go to classes again. I want Sammy Sasso to be able to be a productive a mem- a member and individual in society. I'm not really, when I say these things to you, I just want the guy to be productive and have a healthy life. I don't think really put division one wrestling in his future right now. And I'd have to talk to him, you know, like right, the team, right. but we'd have to talk to, you know what I mean? Well, if you talk to anybody on the team, anybody around the program, he's the toughest wrestler on the team. I mean, by far the team leader, um, he, you know, leads by his actions. Um, and he's super intense. He loves wrestling. So hopefully he finds a way back on the mat and, and uh, gets his health back. But, yeah, you're right. There's bigger, bigger things than wrestling. So, you know, God bless him and God bless his family, all the trauma and issues are going through. Can't what imagine. A story. What a story, though, like for him yeah. to be alive. And I believe he was at practice the other day. That's amazing. I like love it. I love I love the kid's spirit and I love his fight. So I'm pulling yeah. if you're not pulling for that guy. You might want to take a look in the mirror. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> you gotta you gotta well, you gotta have a place in your heart for that guy. But back to the event. Back yeah. to the National Middle School. Those I love talking Buckeyes. You know I could talk Buckeyes with you all night. But we do get an answer. Dylan is gonna go up to 149. I like hearing that. Um trying to be a two time All American and then he will have an additional year, correct? Correct. So the show's not over. I like that. I think that that's a good thing, and I like hearing it. But National Middle School Duels, no longer the Seagate Center. What is the name of the facility now? It's called the Glass City Center. They renovated it. So it's it's uh, the hotel's been renovated that are attached to the arena. Um, all new shops, all new interior. Looks great. And it's still um, a one-stop shop, right? It's still the hotel right. is connected to the arena. Parking right. is underneath. Like, you don't have to see rain or snow hit you in the head the whole time you're there. Right, right. That's what, that's what we love about the tournament. Um, hotels connected, um, 32 teams, um, no buys, centrally located across the country. Um, we're done by 5 o'clock on Saturday, done by 4 o'clock on Sunday. So... Um, teams get in, they get out, they have their evenings to themselves and, um, yeah, they get to enjoy themselves. Parents get to enjoy themselves and it's become one of the toughest tournaments in the country. Um, you know, just looking back at who's wrestled through the tournament, it's just amazing. It's just an amazing list. And, um, certainly the future stars of the sport are wrestling and coming to the event. So it's been a lot of fun. If you want to see where you stack up, you come to this event. I remember watching, uh, was it uh, Seth Mendez, right? That guy's been at the event. I know that we've had uh, the Bassett brothers, obviously, at the event. Uh, Melvin Miller's been at the event. All the Ferrari brothers have been at the event. That's Swar- right. Swarderski's been at the event. Uh, Braden Davis has been at the event. I mean, Ray Burnett's been at the event. Cassiope brothers are at the event. I mean, we're talking about who's who, man. Like, what? What an absolute just stacked event, man. Like, yep, yep. I mean, Cody Chinnam and Caleb Henson and, yeah, Marcus Blaze, right? Yeah. Just won a world Marcus championship. Marcus Blaze world champ. Yeah, I mean. That's right. It's wild to think who's been at this event since I've covered it. It's just like, I, you know, the year that obviously pops up to me is the COVID year where you moved, where you guys were able to, um, you know, really pivot and, and move to Wood County because there was all the crazy uh, restrictions. 
and you made the event happen and, and people still got to see the event and <laughs> the thorn thorns team made it out there and that was probably the most stressful thing I've done in my life is put that event on. Um, uh, we had less volunteers. The high school wasn't able to help. Um, moved at the last minute. Uh, we had a 60 mile an hour. Remember the 60 mile an hour uh, windstorm? Yeah, so the, the, the whole, the, the the whole dome was, was rocking. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's Jody Burnett. She was a big part of that one, wasn't she? She was. She was. So we were about ready to cancel the event. And I talked to Jody and I talked to Jared at, with uh, OAC and they're like, well, you know, people, true wrestlers want to wrestle. They'll find a way. Um, so we worked with the county. Um, we had all kinds of crazy restrictions, um, but we made it happen. We had 32 teams come and we, we put on a great event. Buzakis were there. I remember the. Yep. Yeah, the middle brother and the sister were there. I believe she was undefeated. Casey Cunningham, Asher Cunningham was there. M2 was runner up in the event. Is M2 coming back? They have their New Jersey team coming, but their Pennsylvania team is not. Got it. Uh, yes. We're going to see David Taylor. Olympic champion David Taylor has been at the event before. Is it a possibility to see him again? I'm guessing not because the PA team's not coming. Got it. Um, he, he lives right by the PA because that's where the M2 center is in PA. But I'm guessing right. he's expanded if you're saying there's a Jersey one now. Well, that or, the, yeah, there must be. Yep. Hey, DT ain't no moron. DT's pretty smart. He understands <laughs> his business and how it works. So I'm glad to see that. But, you know, like, I, I, listen, one of my favorite interviews ever, old man Ferrari at the event. Do you remember what I interviewed him? I do. I do. I saw somewhere it was a podcast. Somebody had a, they took a picture of it and they played a clip of it. And I was like, oh, that's, that is hilarious. Because then I know the stalemates guy interviewed him and it, it's kind of awesome because no, the guy was like, oh, why you want to interview me? And I was like, well, first off, you're super interesting. Second, yeah. uh, your kids are freaks of nature. And I remember the big thing he talked about is he couldn't believe all his boys lost there. Yeah. Yeah. Did um I think so I was Gray Burnett's never he's always taken a loss there. Yeah, I was looking at his record last year. It was like six and two, and he's you know top rate in the country right now. So yeah. it was funny too. I was talking to some of the Ohio State parents and I was talking to the Mendezes, and they're like, Man, that's the toughest tournament in the country. You know, we were there. So I was talking to Hector today about how many times did you know Jesse Camp come and said he lost once, but he's been there several times at the tournament. Pasakis has been there. Um, so Crazy. yeah it's it's, it's been it's, fun yeah the event you've put together has been unreal so we've had a bunch of different teams win it right we've had yep. the minions out of georgia they've won it um dynasty dynasty's the kind of a, a national all-star team we've had a couple different california teams that have been in the gold pool obviously m2's been in that final um a bunch of so the team. The team last year, Zeb was Team Revival out of New Jersey. Yeah, so they came in and just crushed everyone. They did a great job. And then POWA out of Colorado, they're always tough. POWA's got a good squad. Um, and then I know that we've had Buxton usually has a team there out of New Jersey. So you've always had like a really good solid base. That you're bringing, you're bringing, you're doing a really good job attracting the the Western teams. How do you do that, and how do you think that you're able to appeal to the teams out west that got these big travel, uh, you know, restrictions kind of to go within, and it turns into a five day event for some of them, you know, for travel as far as flying. But yeah. how do you, how do you keep bringing the? Yeah, I know. I think teams take it as a challenge. They want to be at uh, the toughest tournaments, and um, we're centrally located across the country. Um, you know, I like our, our format. We limit it to 32 teams. So that's, you know, we have a waiting list. And I, you know, a lot of the parents will push some of the coaches like, hey, we want to go to these tournaments. They hear about it. Like this year, I got contacted by Chance uh, Marsteller. So um, he wanted to get his club in. So their team's coming. Nice. Stout um, trained, right? Yep, stellar, stellar trained. Yep, stellar trained. Uh, Pinnacle, Pinnacle out of Minnesota. We're gonna see them again. No, we're not. They're not coming this year. They said they want to come back, but they're not coming this year. They got some of it depends thing. on their lineup and how things line up. 
Yeah, they got a weird thing, though, because their seventh and eighth graders can actually wrestle in the high school season. And I think what's happened the last couple of years with Pinnacle is they haven't been able to, those seventh and eighth graders, it will, they could lose potentially lose um, eligibility because I think their season started a week earlier. I think that's actually what happened. So it was something like that because I talked to Coach Lawrence. And um, that's something going on like that. But did you ever think it would, and I ask you this last year, I ask you this every year, did you ever yeah. think it would become what has become? No, no way. No. Um, we wanted to put on a good tournament and then we started getting great teams coming and then it just took off from there. And and we have a great group of people running the tournament. You know, Jody Barnett's huge. Burnett train wrestling's huge. Um, our, our, our school, our, our club board, they put a lot of time into it. Um, and then we got great partners. The partners have been solid. They've been with us from day one. Um, I know we talked about them at the top, but Brutus and Defense Soap and Ohio Athletic Committee um, couldn't ask for better partners. When you look at like, you know, Guy Seiko is expanding his um, sponsorship of you guys. What's it like knowing that someone like that wants to put more into you and invest more? Yeah, what's kind of cool is they contact me. They're like, hey, we want to make a bigger commitment. We want to be more involved. So Brutus did that last year. Defense Soap did that this year. They both want to make a long-term commitment. Um, so we're committed to this. We want this to be one of the best tournaments. We want this to be on people's radar. Um, we want it to be efficient. You know, people come in, they have fun. Uh, there's a ton of restaurants downtown. Um, I remember my one of my favorite tournaments was just going up to Kellogg Arena because you could, there's a hotel connected to it. Um, and so I know I appreciated when I traveled across the country, you know, not driving. I want to drive to the event. I want to walk to the the event. I want to walk to restaurants. Um, I don't want to be fighting parking. And as a dad, I appreciate, and a coach, I appreciate my evenings being free. I, it was fun. I My biggest memories or my funnest, fondest memories are hanging out with the coaches at, at night, just swapping stories, right? Telling all kinds of war stories and, and then recanting the day, looking ahead at the brackets. Um, wouldn't trade my memories. Um, some of my best, and then spending time with your boys, right? I mean, how you'll 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 be entering this soon, right? At some we'll point, see. we'll see. Yeah. It's going to be basketball this year. Well, hey, whatever. <laughs> yeah, as a friend of mine told me, just find a hotel with a pool, and everyone's happy. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, we went to the state track meet last year. Uh, my nephew Owen placed in the state track meeting a couple of events. That's right. The uh, the highlight, though, wasn't watching their cousin. It was, can we go to the pool tonight, tomorrow, and then can we come back afterwards and go back to the pool? That was. Zab, it's simple. You find a hotel with a pool and you buy pizza. It's, it's you, you. Everybody's you, happy. You, sir, have cracked the code with that. With that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I got a big one. Yes, sir. Big one. I'm not happy. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm pretty. I'm. I'm bitter. I'm not gonna lie. So since the first, the first time since 1986, the Oak Harbor Rockets will no longer be a member of the Sandusky Bay Conference. The last time they were in the Southern Lakes League, is that what it was called? Uh, I think it was. Yes. So, or, uh, they won the Southern Lakes League in 1986, and then they went to the SBC in 87 and won that. And then they've had George Bergman's won double digits a month SBC titles. They will now be joining the, what's it, NBC? Uh, Northern Buckeye. That sounds right, yeah? Yeah. Not happy. I'm very better. I don't think anybody's, no one's happy. I'm very uh, better. You know, Super all better. this realignment is ridiculous. So the, the smallest schools keep dropping out. And so someone's yeah. got to be the smallest. Yeah. I don't like it. You know what I do like? One thing I like about it. I can't wait to beat Bob Bergman and <laughs> wipe that smug gr grin off of his face. I want him to know and see this, that I can't wait for his uncle George all right, really walk to beat him in a dual meet this year, and then the tournament, and then the Rockets walk off of the truck. I'm okay with that. That's what All I right. can't get for. Don All right, it's on. Now. All right, 
<laughs> I love it. You like that I said that smug look off of his face, Dom? Yeah. Well, this is all staying in here. This doesn't come off. Bob's got to see this. Oh, he will. I got to watch it. He might hit me with one of those carts. The the mat movers when I'm when you guys right are right yeah tearing down take you out the kneecaps yeah I mean it won't take much it won't take much but that is the one thing I'm actually excited about hey what was the year when you guys were they were beating you they were in the they were in second right at the state tournament that was 2016. 2016. So they beat us at sectionals, districts, and then we beat them at state. But you beat them on your last match. Who was it? I forget. It was one of your guys who he must have pinned the guy. Was it Lamanji? I think it was. I don't and then you guys won the next. Did you win the next two, two years then? Yeah. And then you broke the. D3 record, right? Six champs. How many points? I forget. At 178, something like that. Yeah, like, like I don't I don't know that that point record will ever be beaten at Division they're not three. Touching that. Because here's yeah. the thing about D3. It's it's like you can start up and win in D3. You can't just – you can't kick the door in and go do that in D1 and D2. Well, it, it – it, it, when you have a small school, the the challenge building a, a, a successful club and, and sustaining it is when you have young guys that come in and beat the older guys, the older guys kind of fade away and then, you know, your numbers could go down. Um, so it's a challenge to keep the pipeline going, keep the bitty program going, keep the middle school going and to be humming at all three levels. It takes it takes incredible lot of work. Yep. Sounds like you guys are back though, right? We like, have a nice team. We have a nice balanced team. Yeah. yeah. Bob yeah. might really be excited. Bob might be make he's gonna make me eat these words, probably, is my guess. I don't know. I don't even know the Rockets lineup or if they can run with you guys if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> Just run in my mouth here, Dom. I don't no, like it'll be it'll be fun. Oh Carver's but I don't like the move. I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't like the move. I hear you. We're just we're humans and we don't like change, right? I don't like in college football. It's crazy or college. Oh, don't it's get crazy. I, Dom, I can't. I can't. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The biggest thing you want people across the country, the California teams, the southern teams, the western teams. What do you want them to yeah, know? We want, the we want them to get out of the event. What do you want them to know yeah, about? Yeah, we want the best teams here. We want it to be an efficient run event. Um you know, we're one of the few nonprofit organizations that run a tournament. Most of the national tournaments are for profit organizations. We're not. Um, we have a highly motivated group of, uh, you know, volunteers and our, you know, tournament committee. Um, we run the same formula, you know, and so come to our event, get on a team. Um, if you can't get on a team, get on our free agent list. We have over 50 wrestlers right now on our free agent list um, that teams can pick up. So we have people from all across the country on our free agent list on our website. That's wild. Um, so we don't them. want any teams to have a buy if they can, or a, 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 yeah, a buy, not a buy, but a, a forfeit if they can uh, avoid it. When do you let them know by? When when does a kid got to know by? Like what what's a what's an ample amount of time you think you can give them? Hey, we need you. Team California Gold doesn't oh, have this, that or the other. Th oh, things happen all the time. Kids get sick. Uh, you know, someone drops out. Um, last year, we placed, I think, about 50 kids on teams. Wow. And so far, we've placed about 25, and we have 50 on the list. And wow. it grows. Every day I get contacted to add someone to the list. What's the team wait list right now? We have about a dozen teams, but at this point, like if somebody dropped out, it'd be hard to replace them because it takes a long time to fill 17 weight classes and get organized. And it's logistical to travel, all that right, stuff. Right, too, right, right, parents right. Be on board and, right. Um, you know, we've talked a bunch before and the event, the event, I think it can be expanded. When When's expansion going to happen? I know we've already expanded to what the field of 32, but, when are we going to go to 40? When are we going to go to 48? When are we going to get to 64? When, when is that coming? Yeah, yeah. So I think we'd like to expand, but we want to do it right. Um, I think the uh, 
arena would be tight to, to add mats. So we'd have to look at, you know, a staggered schedule. So um, unless we change the venue. Um, so it's something that we'll have to work through and think about. Uh, I like how there's a demand, there's a waiting list. Um, you know, the brackets are even, everything, you know, everything lines up perfectly. Everything's symmetrical. Hey, the other thing too is, you're going to finally get it right. You're finally going to get them seated right and competitive. Yeah, we're going to do our best. We're going to do our best. It's never perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that seems to be the bane of your existence for about three days every year, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that. That's a lot of work figuring that oh, out. For sure. They get mad at you, don't they? They do. And we got Rudis mats coming this year. So we got oh, 10 got brand new Rudis mats. You got those state yeah. tournament mats? Yep. So hold on. Do you have enough for all of them, or how many Rudis mats do they have? They have 10. And then will those be the OAC mats and Genoa mats? That'd be a combination of OAC, Genoa, Perrysburg. Yeah. Yeah, we have plenty of mats. Gotcha. Yeah. I love it. I mean, the event, I love it. Yes, yeah, just thinking. One of the Mantonona brothers was at this tournament, and that might have been the toughest person I've ever. He's like out of California. And there's like, I think there's three or four of them, man, and they're tall and lanky. Those dudes are hammers. Just off the top of my head, I was like, that may be the best performance I've ever seen at the tournament. Who was the team from Maryland who won a couple of years ago? Minions, not Maryland. Minions. Uh no, no, minions that are Georgia. Um, no, that was it. Was Mar Maryland had a team that won? Terps, Junior Terps. That's right. Terps won it. Remember? They came out of nowhere. Remember that? that yeah, I don't know that they won it. No, they won it. We had a stretch of dynasty went in and POWA Buxton, Team Ohio. Will Team Ohio be back? Yes. Yep. Defense, yeah, I believe does defense have another team too. I'm sorry. Does defense have a team as well? Yes, yes. So West Shore got a their club got a team together. They're gonna call it defense or West Shore. West Shore. West Shore. Which they can kind of inter interchange that, but man, West Shore's got a hammer program. Right, right. How about that guy thing takes this program against these national, these national teams that are from all you know, 15, 10, 15 states. Um, what's my guy, my big guy, big Tim. Ziola. Oh yeah. Yeah. Big he's Tim. not, he's not coming this year. His sons ah, are in high like school. Tim got to make yeah. it up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Tim we love Dynasty, Tim. Right. Right. And right. Then, what was the team out of Texas that was really tough? Uh, dynamite team dynamite. Team dynamite. Like, they were tough yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know how you do it, man. I don't know how you right. keep on these people. It's amazing. I know how you do it. You, you put a good product out there. Well, hey, we appreciate you there too. Sunday is fun when you show up and you do the the live commentary. It really adds um, some excitement to the matches. I know, uh, you know, towards the end when we're in the gold pool, everyone's lining up on the edge of the mats. Things are getting heated, um, and you just go a million miles an hour. I don't. And then you're flying interviews in between sessions. Um, yeah, it's it's a perfect combination. Love it. Looking uh, forward to having you. Love it. What else you got for me? Anything else? No, life is good. Looking forward to the tournament. Um, November 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Or actually, we're live uh, November 4th and 5th. All matches are broadcast live on Flow. So make sure you have your Flow account. And let's have some fun. I love it. How many years with Flow Wrestling now on the broadcast, uh, streaming it? Uh, well, we teeter back and forth between flow and track. And so now that they're one and the same, I could, you know, I would say we've been mostly with flow. Yeah. Eight years, seven or eight years though. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you've only had one year where you didn't have it streamed, right? No, we've always had it streamed. Always. So all nine. Always. It's always been streamed. I yeah. love it. I love it that you're a mainstay on the, the flow wrestling schedule and you guys are still bringing value to what their channel is. And I like that. Dom, we're good. I think we're good. We're, we're good. good. Ohio Cast podcast tonight. What's that? I'm sorry. You got anything else for me? We good on the Ohio Cast? We're podcast? good. We're good. Can't wait for the event. We'll see you soon, Zeb. Love it. Stick around.
Talk to you a little bit off camera here. Don Demelia, thanks for the time. National Middle School Duels, November 4th and 5th. Downtown Toledo at the Glass City Center. Hosted by Don Demelio. What? Don Demelio. Genoa. Wrestling. Genoa wrestling. Yeah. Perrysburg. We're not trained. Perrysburg. Yeah. Defense Soap and Rudis, correct? Correct. All right, Don. Thanks for the time. Stick around. All right, Zeb. Thanks.